Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we're with The Noble Marriage. We're here to inspire your marriage and impact marriages globally through some skills such as improved communication. Yeah, and we're helping couples discover true love and intimacy as God intended. So thanks for joining us today. Listening to Touch the Line podcast. My name is Evan Silver, and here we focus on leadership, culture, and building a team. This podcast was created to serve you so you can serve others. Travis, Adele, we're back again. You guys have made it three times on the podcast, so thank you for your time today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, hate you can't find anybody better. <laughs> no, well, you, you guys having us, man. Yeah, you guys, uh, we've been prepping for this podcast for a couple of months now, and we want to make sure that we execute it right. That we and, and you guys were like, look, we're an open book. We're transparent. We don't have to like, you know. Uh, beat around the bush and go around like let's just go straight toward it so thank you guys for your transparency I know your story is going to help a lot of people today Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm excited about I feel like we'll we'll talk about what you're doing now in the next episode because what you're doing now is really amazing and I want to give you time to talk about that but let's go all the way back to Solana Dell when you first started Mm -hmm. so Adele tell me like why when did you open the salon in 2014 and what's really interesting about that is I had been doing hair for man how many years you started in 2005 or 2004 and then we opened in 2013 so 10 years I had been doing suite rental and I had the largest suite available And I still needed more space because I was double booking, triple booking. And um, then I hired my first assistant and never thought twice about I'm now an employer. (laughs) And so it just kind of happened that way where we hired that first person and then she started to build her book. So we needed a bigger space for that. So then we found our first location And it really was just meant for me and her. I never planned on having a salon and growing a salon to be a, you know. Employer. Yeah. Or a real salon. We just, (laughs) she just wanted to be like, all right, I'm doing hair. That's what I like to do. That's what I want to do. And I got too many guests. Yeah, my guest count just kept growing and growing, which was such a blessing. And then I ended up as an employer (laughs) and had no idea what I was doing, really. And man, yeah. we, we made a lot of mistakes in those first couple of years. So, so why, why another salon? We have salons on every corner. Why another salon? And we were officially opening a salon. You expressed to me several times that, um, you just can't find the salon out there. That would be the home that you would want to be in. Yes. Yeah. I had, I, I had ho- salon hopped all 10 years looking for the best place for me. And I really wanted to create an upscale experience for women and specifically women with thinning hair. And so that was the thought process behind like having my own space, even though I didn't mean to be an owner, (laughs) um, (laughs) was just to create what I feel I felt the most comfortable in. Yeah. So you, you had a, an idea and was, did you find, were there other places that you found that were specializing in luxury and thinning hair? Or is that kind of, you were kind of finding your niche in that? No, in fact, nobody was doing extensions back then. And so I had a bright idea. I'll start a website and a blog and I think I can be, you know, the top extension artist around here because nobody's doing it. And so that's what I did. And I, my business just started booming with extension. That was like 2006, 2007, when MySpace was going out, Facebook was coming in, 
people really didn't have a lot of websites specifically in yeah. this industry. And we were like, well, let's let's create a website. Adele knew how to do some stuff like that. And I had created some websites too. And so we just yeah created Hair by Adele website. Yeah. That was the well, that's name awesome. of the company was Hair by Adele. And I had, I had nice. clients traveling from all over hours away to see me since nobody was doing extensions. Yeah, now everybody's Everybody. doing extensions because everyone wants extensions and then it's it's a high-end service for sure. Um, well, I say everybody does extensions. I'm not saying everybody does them correctly. Right. But... <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. I love like how you started. You had a vision. Um, you, 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 you found your niche because there's salons everywhere. Tell me this. What did your leadership look like in the beginning? And Travis is laughing. Okay, if you're you're scared, babe. <laughs> All right. So I'll share both sides of leadership. Um, I had been in law enforcement for a lot of years and in supervision administration and man, I really feel bad for the people I supervised prior to this because I was the leadership of um, not showing people like an example, but do what I say, not do what I do, but do what I say. And I felt like I had all the answers and I didn't need anything from anyone. And, and that was my leadership style, not very conducive to uh, people. And then Adele's leadership style was you've worked in a few companies prior to hair and then you did hair, but there was no leadership uh, right. or supervision of any, any kind or development of that. Or even knowing how to run a business. Like Yeah, we didn't know how to run companies yeah. at all. <laughs> we just thought it'd be cool to run companies. I remember sitting in my apartment right when we got together and I had this big board up, whiteboard, and I was creating these companies um, that I wanted to do. I came up with probably two or three different ideas I wanted to do. And I had started a, a company before we met, two companies, but I didn't know how to run a company. And so the way we did it was like, we'll just figure it out. And just wasn't very people centric. People weren't first. It was like, how do we make money? And if we need people, we'll just hire people to make money. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I was terrified of conflict. Like, <laughs> I can't deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would go running to him anytime somebody like did something they should be doing or whatever. And I think I lost a lot of respect and trust during that time. Uh, looking back because I couldn't handle things that were happening within the company. And I was like, so, okay, I'll handle it. And so I would go <laughs> handle it. Would. And it just wouldn't be handled very effectively at all. Yeah. So Travis, when you walked in, um, did the staff, were they happy to see you or were they kind of like, uh Oh, Travis no. is here because I wasn't working in the salon every day. If I showed up, things were bad. <laughs> oh man. It meant somebody was, yeah. It meant trouble. someone was in trouble if I showed up cause I wasn't there. Yeah, man, that's, that, that's a powerful statement. And I think a lot of people listening, you know, I always try to make when I, when I show up, like I want people to think, Oh my gosh, Evan's here. Right. So I think if you're listening to this, you're a leader. When you walk in is your staff going, Oh my gosh, such and such is here. And I think that's a huge thing. Adele, what do you feel like when you walked into the room? What did people feel and think in the beginning? Um, Hmm. I was telling Travis last night, I feel like my, pride was such an issue back then because I felt like, look what I did. And so I don't think I was relatable to especially new girls out of school, which is what we were seeking to hire. I put myself so much above people that it was really hard for them to relate to me and be friends with me. And I had gotten the awful advice to keep my employees at a long distance. <laughs> Mm. No friendships, like that's not cool because then boundaries get crossed and all these things. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So I kept everybody at a very arm's length away from me where they didn't ever, they didn't even know me and who I really was. 
So um, I'm assuming that's there. that's bad advice. Go ahead, right. Travis. I was thinking when you said that, when you kept them at arm's length, I guess that was also to keep them from hurting you. Oh, yeah. So uh, early on, we had an employee leave and it was a bad experience. And after that, I, I was like, no way am I getting close to any of these people. <laughs> And so did, horrible did, advice. <laughs> did you did you change that concept over time where you got closer with the people you worked with? Yeah, I did. Um, when in 2015, we went to a kind of a salon boot camp, and it's it's inspiring champions, and we learned so much. It was like drinking from a fire hose. It was that weekend three days of just nonstop trying to grab information. And they warned us, um, don't go back and change everything or all your people will leave. Yeah. But we were so eager. <laughs> so we did exactly what they told us not to do and came back and we were like, we're going to teach you everything we've learned. We had 60% leave. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how long was this event? It was probably multiple days, right? Three days. Three days. Yeah. Three days. And you're coming back and you're telling them everything in like 20 minutes and they're trying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you had people leave 60%, oh, yeah. 60%. Now, how, how were you feeling in that moment? Um, uh, they kind of told us that would happen if we went back and tried to change too much at once. And so I was kind of just like, Oh, they were right. I remember exactly <laughs> mm. how it went. So I remember, vividly remember us being in our sitting room in our master bedroom. Adele was beyond herself, just crying her eyes out. And like, I hate being a business owner. I want to get out of this. I don't ever want to do this again. And I was crying and I was in that space with her. And I was like, oh, what do we do? And thank God we have amazing people. Like I remember we were on the phone with, um, was it Lauren Gartland? And Jolene. And Jolene late at night for like an hour of them speaking into us, talking us back down, bringing us back to reality. And, but man, as a business owner, stuff like that happens and it happens with a decision or a choice. That's like, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm without thinking about the ripple effect of decision-making as a leader. I, I just want to say that was one of my big issues is I am the type of person where if we want to make a pivot, let's just do it. Let's do it today. And I didn't realize that there was a ripple effect on my team. In fact, I even learned that again through COVID because we would make decisions and I would be great following that new decision, but the team is kind of left with, but we've been doing it this way and yeah. how do we just switch? <laughs> Cause yeah. not everybody can do that. Yeah. One thing that I, I learned you're cause there's everybody has different personalities. I did an EQ test. Um, and the guy told me, he said, you have really low stress. And I was like, heck yeah, that's awesome. He said, that's not such a great thing because you can make decisions, you could do change and it doesn't affect you whatsoever. But if you're leading people, it can throw them into, it can be chaos. And so I'm so glad that's all I remember from that coaching session. So anything I do in business or anything, I'm like, okay, this is okay for me, but there's people that this is going to affect that they're not their personality. And it's not that it's wrong. Um, it, there's just, everybody's different. So, uh, it sounds like you guys kind of figured that out the hard way, unfortunately. The very hard way. I think we figured out everything the hard way in this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and so uh, you guys wanted to come on and be like, Hey, we, we learned the hard way and we, <laughs> we want to tell people our story. So, yeah. um, it doesn't matter if you tell, Hey, don't go back and change. Don't go back and change. You're going to have some people go back and change. Yep. Yeah. So what did you guys do after, you know, you're sobbing in the bedroom, you're like, and I always say, look, if, if the salon owners wanting to give up, if they're wanting to quit, I say that's some, that's sometimes a great thing because it shows that they actually give a crap and yeah. they actually care about the business. So that's not always a red flag. So what'd you guys do after that moment? 
Um, so thank goodness we had hired a business coach. Best decision we ever made. Yeah. And she was able to walk us through all of that and let me know I've been there and I know exactly what you're going through. And that was such a huge comfort for me. I felt like for the first time somebody was in my corner and not me against everyone else. And so um, we, we had a few pivotal team members on our team at that time that we really invested in and they are actually the ones that helped us switch the culture around yeah. to a completely different culture. And we started to see positive changes a little bit at a time. And then, you know, two steps back, we'd have somebody leave. And I had this, like, we call them thorns of I'm not good enough every time somebody would leave. And I had to learn that over and over and over because I just couldn't let it go. I felt like it meant something about me that people were leaving. Yeah. And, um, in fact, I just really learned that through COVID. And I really got for the first time, this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> yeah. But I would make it all about me and didn't know any different. And so. I was going to talk about our culture too. It, um, one thing we really learned about our culture is that when we're not actively engaged in developing mm -hmm. the culture, someone else on my team is. Oh, yeah. say that again, Travis. When we're not actively engaged in developing our culture the way we want it to be, someone else on our team is doing it. Yep. And we had a yo-yo effect for years where here's our culture. We would speak into it, work into it, vision cast it. And then we would step to the side and let someone else bring another culture. And it happened over and over and over. Yeah. Wow. When you came on full time, that really became your primary focus was the culture. Because and I was behind the chair and I was working just as much as everybody else. So I didn't have the time for the culture. Right. And everybody's coming to you about situations. You're like, I'm with the guest. Same right. scenario with my wife and I. And so, yeah. Travis, when did you come on full time? A couple of times in 2015, I came on and it didn't work out for me because of the personal issues I had going on in my life. And then again in 2017, I was finally like, all right, I am all in. I'm committed because I resisted this salon. I didn't want to be part of it. And because I had a different career field. And I finally 2017 is like, I'm all in. I'm committed to you. I'm committed to this salon. Let's go. Yeah. And then I have been in a steady sense of how do we improve ourselves and how do we improve leadership and culture ever since that time yeah we really dove into what is leadership as a couple and how do we lead people you know in a in a world the way it was at the time yeah um what was your marriage like because when you have marriages and husband and wives and they're 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 running a salon we get all the time like how do you guys work together and i think it all starts at home that's where it all starts right. so what was your marriage like maybe when you started the salon um up into probably when you came on um travis uh so our marriage was extremely rocky in 2014 and 2015 and 16 those were our, our three hardest years that we had and if it was not for our business coach i mean she really helped us figure out what our lanes look like because we were all over each other's lanes and he was telling me how to do things and i'm telling him how to do things rather just stay in your lane and don't cross over and she started teaching us that and that was amazing. And yeah. then joined with, we had some boundaries put around our marriage and our work. And so that looked like after a certain time, our phones were put away and we would not talk work talk after 8 p.m. because we would get amped up and then not be able to sleep and not have time together. Yeah. Uh, probably the biggest thing is staying in our lanes, learning how to stay in our lanes. And then, like she said, the first few years, 
I had my own issues going on that internally for me, I had a lot of depression and PTSD and anxiety and stuff like that, that I was dealing with. And so I wasn't very effective even leading my own home, much less a, a company or even myself. Mm. However, when we were together in a company, I was like, well, my way is the right way. Yeah. Like I always think that I'm right. So I would tell her the right way to do it. And she didn't agree. And it just became ineffective. Man, so many arguments in the beginning till we learned like we're on the same team here. Yeah. And it, <clears throat> we've talked about this before on the podcast is finding each other's lanes. It took Aaron and I probably almost a year and we're still maintaining that lane, you know, and I swerve into her lane and she beeps the horn and uh, vice versa. Um, <laughs> but our staff, it's really healthy for the staff to know that, you know, who to go to instead of being like, well, I know um, dad might say no. So I'll go to mom. And that just, that doesn't work out because then you guys get home and then you find out and then you guys are arguing. It's like, well, and it's just get lanes, get some, um, yeah, some boundaries up. I love that you guys uh, are doing that. So when you started out, I know, you know, there's not a lot of salons that are profitable. Were you guys profitable in the beginning or is it more towards the beginning or were you guys ever profitable? Yeah. Do you want to go? I was going to say at the very beginning, we thought we were profitable. We had a lot of money coming in. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we had a lot more going out and we didn't know it because we didn't know how to run a business. We didn't know what a profit and loss was or how to do a P&L. And so it wasn't until that boot camp and getting a business coach online that we were able to maintain or get profitability so that was beginning of 2016 and by 2017 we had implemented enough systems and that I had we learned, had profit from 2017 on i had learned p l's and how to separate everything and budgets and all those things and so in 2016 I was really moving stuff around to get them in the right category. And it took a full year to really get a good solid P and L where we could then make adjustments. And so in 2017, we had a 78%, 78, 77% yeah, increase. increase. Wow. And that blew my mind. And when I saw that I could make small changes in how much we're spending, I started to really get the hang of how to get profit. And so in 2000, uh, was it 17 or 18, we had a 24% profit. So 2017, 17. we had a 77% increase, but with that, a 24% service profit, which is yeah. unheard, unheard of. of. Yeah, that's awesome. And so then um, in 2018, we had like an 18% profit, which we were still really excited about. And then in 2020, we had planned to hit a million with 20% profit and COVID happened. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work out. However, we were <laughs> online to do it. Our first three months, we were in our brand new business, January, February, March, all amazing month, best, months. Yeah, best, yeah. It was ever. the best we've ever had. We had 17 employees that were killing it. Most of them had been to the boot camp similar to what we had been to. And so, you know, we had figured out that to run a really profitable salon, there needs to be systems in place, yep. goal setting and talking about finances with the team so they could actually get on board with us to save money on the outgoing. And that was awesome when we got them on board with that. Yeah. So yeah. you, you had 17 staff, you were in a, I would say, not ideal location. You were making it happen, but you were kind of yeah. off. You were on the busiest road in the upstate, but you were kind of hidden um, right. in, a, in a, a business park. And here you go. You're launching a new location. And guys, listen, their location is <laughs> stunning. It's beautiful. So you're you're going into this, you know, beautiful salon and you have 17 staff and you went in in like what January of 2020? Yep, like, January 1st. Yeah, and if we knew what was going to happen, 
everybody would tell you, oh God, please don't do that. You know, I think a lot of people, if they knew, they would have changed a lot of business decisions. So you go in there, you, you, you're going in, you're going to freaking kill it. You don't know what's about to happen. And then March, I mean, two months later, the world just shuts down. And so that's where we're going to end this podcast because I'm going to pick it up after that because COVID radically changed your business and it radically changed, I believe, what God called you to do. And so we're going to end it right here. This podcast will be released next week and we'll listen to part two of Adele and Travis. Hey, you're not finished yet. We're here to make a difference and inspire your marriage and other marriages as well. And if you found value in these videos, leave us a comment and let us know what that was so we can make other videos similar to that. We would love for you to join our community of awesome, like-minded people. They are awesome. Go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll get daily motivational videos that impact your life and inspire you to be your best self. This also helps us get our message out to marriages all over the world. So thank you so much for subscribing and joining our community.